Hello and welcome back to Inspire with Nicola. Our guest today is a well-being and law of attraction practitioner with several years of crystal healing, mindfulness coaching, manifesting practice and mental health knowledge under his belt. His focus is around holistic healing by way of using meditation, crystal therapies and visualization to bring forth and awaken what lies dormant in each one of us. His number one podcast, Canny Crystals, Manifestation, Minds and Spirituality is listened to by thousands each week and is described as a self-help audiobook for modern day living. Please welcome Mart Tweedy. Hi, Nicola. How are you? I am so good. Thank you so much for joining us today. No, thank I'm you. I'm so excited to get you on this show. I have been following you. I just love your energy and personality. And I just really want to share that with our audience because I know that what you have to share and after this podcast, people will look at what you're into in a whole new way. Yeah, I hope so. I hope that's what it kind of comes across as, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Before we get started, for the non-English listeners and for the non-kind of North Eastern listeners, what does canny crystals mean? So I'll actually go into it a little bit yeah. um, in my story of where I actually like came up with the name. But canny just means like, all right. Like yeah. loads of people say like, oh, how are you doing? Oh, yeah, I'm canny. Or it, it can also mean good, like, oh, that's canny, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah. I think it's quite a northern thing. It's not just Newcastle. It tends to be kind of like Scotland as well. They use uh, canny. Okay. Uh, but yeah, I'll go into that a bit more in detail when I talk about my story, because there is an interesting story as to how the name came about, actually. Love, love, love. So let's get into it. Tell us, who are you? Where did it all begin? Oh, right. So I think as long as I remember, I've always like, you know, had an interest in tarot cards and psychics and spiritualist churches, you know, as you do, just generally being obsessed with like anything supernatural, thinking there's got to be more to the world than just the plain black and white that we see every day. Yeah. And I came from a family that had very little growing up. Like we always had the essentials, you know, like food and water and love. But my family were far from well off. And I think, like everyone else, my journey on spirituality started with reading a book called The Secret. Same, and I yeah. first read that in 2016. So for those of you that don't know, it's it's like a book about manifesting desires. And with manifesting being quite a new concept to me, I was just visualizing daily. And I decided to set myself a goal of three and a half thousand pounds for a three week holiday to Indonesia. And at the time I was working in the NHS, I had about 15,000 pounds of debt. And I was just basically working to survive. So I hadn't had a holiday in a good few years. So every day I was just laying in the bath. I had like seagull bird noises on playing like (laughs) across the bathroom. And I was visualizing myself, you know, lying on beaches, visualizing that £3,500 surplus in my bank account. Mm. And on a bit of a whim one day, I remember just seeing an advert on Twitter for a new series of the ITV game show Tipping Point. I don't know if you know it. It's the one with Ben Shepherd. You answer yeah. some questions, you get a token, put it in the machine, mm-hmm. like those two P arcade machines at the seaside. Anyway, to cut a long story short, taking that inspired action, I applied. And a couple of months later, I got invited to a little audition at a hotel in Newcastle. And before I knew it, I was on the show. And it'll be no surprise that I was the winning contestant. And the amount that I won was £3,500. No! Oh, my God, I got goosebumps! Yeah. And you know when you just get those light bulb moments and you're like, holy shit, I did it. Like, it was definitely one of those moments. But obviously, the more people I told about this, the more I got kind of shot down, you know, with people weird looking at us and people thinking I was just losing the plot. And it's hard to explain to non-believers, isn't it? And I I remember telling my partner, Johnny, about it one day and he'd read The Secret. And a few weeks later, he came to me and said, guess what? I visualized something small, a £50 note. And then today, my boss came and he gave me two £50 notes to say thank you for going above and beyond. And that was it for me. I was sold. I was like, this shit works. Yeah. And then guess what happened for the next three years? Absolutely nothing. (laughs) <laughs> I think I think just more than anything, life got in the way. Yeah. And you know what it's like? Like almost like I immediately snapped out of cloud cuckoo land, as my mum calls it. And I just thought, you know, I'm 30 years old now. It's time to buckle up, get me head down at work if I want to climb the ladder. So then if we jump ahead those three years to 2019, just to paint a bit of a picture. Yeah. I'd now been working in the NHS for 12 years at that point. And just like the majority of people in the UK, I was in debt. I had credit cards. I was struggling to even get a mortgage. 
True. And I was just surviving day to day. Don't get us wrong, but money was so tight. Yeah. I was in a £30,000 a year job in the NHS, but still struggling to make ends meet. Yeah. So I started my visualisation all over again. And I'd always had a bit of a keen interest in social media. And I always thought, you know, one day I'll be on TV. So I was sat visualising myself on the couch with Alison Hammond on this morning, yes. chatting away, you know, <laughs> just like little flyaway goals. And I remember one day, my friend at the time, Amber, came to me and said she was in the running to be on the ITV2 show Love Island. And she asked if I would be like in charge of all of her social media whilst I was in there. So obviously I jumped at that opportunity. I said yes. And a few weeks later, things got crazy because I was in charge of a social media. So I got invited on to BBC Radio 1, BBC News Breakfast. I was on Capital Radio and local radio almost daily. The Huffington Post actually ran an article on me branding it the most successful social media campaign of all time. No. And then what happened, I got invited on to this morning to do a little section on Love Island. And just by chance, who came in on a day off? Shut Alison Hammond. Of course. And honestly, it was again one of those moments where you just really realise that visualisation works. So this and is... And who was weird. Amber? Which Amber was that? Amber Gill, she's called. Yeah, yeah. I know. I, that was my favourite season. Yeah, I that, think that's oh when Love God. Island started going downhill after that, didn't it? Yeah, well, I haven't yeah. watched it, so obviously. But yeah, yeah. I was obsessed, <laughs> actually obsessed with that series. Uh, yeah. It was uh, such characters and such amazing humans. And Amber was in- incredible. And her career, you yeah. set her up, basically. If you think about it, you set her up, her social media, for the career that she has now. I'd like to think so. I think when she went in, she had 4,000 followers. And when she came out, she had like 2.3 million or something. It's absolutely oh. crazy. So you can imagine how mad yeah. my life was for those eight weeks. And just to paint a bit but of did a... did you love it? Did you oh, just yeah, love it? God, yeah, you, I oh my God, it. I just love the buzz and the yeah. thrill and yeah, being amongst it. Um, so this is a bit weird because it was actually four years yesterday when this happened. So four years ago yesterday, I was on top of the world. Obviously, it was the Love Island final. Our mortgage went through that same morning after six months of hell. We got the keys for our house at 5 p.m. And by 7 p.m., we were out in Newcastle at a Love Island finale party. And Amber won. And obviously, yeah. I was ecstatic. I remember being pulled up on stage in front of everyone that was there watching. I was crying. Everyone was screaming. It was just a real triumph moment for me because I'd run the campaign on the yeah. outside. So we got home a bit later than planned after a few drinks. And the next morning, I just remember being laying in bed and my phone was ringing. And this was like 6 a.m. So when I looked at it and I just thought, it's going to be news reporters or something like that. But as soon as I saw it was my mum, I immediately jumped out of bed and I was like, oh my God, something's happened. And you know, when you just get that feeling inside and you know something has happened. So my gut sank and I knew something was wrong. And I relived this phone call over and over again in my head. But my mom told me that whilst I was out celebrating, nobody in the family had basically wanted to disturb me and spoil the mood. But my granddad had been taken to hospital in quite a lot of pain that came on instantly. And unfortunately, he died in the ambulance before they even got to hospital. And it's really tragic because he wasn't ill. It came on so suddenly. And my granddad raised me. Like, my dad oh, didn't raise uh, me growing up. It yeah. was my dad. He was my dad, basically. Um, so he was the father figure in my life. And I just felt like instantly my world fell apart. Mm. And I can't even remember the next few months after that, you know. Like, I was getting calls from, you know, this morning, Good Morning Britain, the radio and things like that. People wanting to speak to me to get, like, quotes and things off me to use. And I, I just turned my phone off. I couldn't deal yeah. with it. And the months that followed after that, I just closed myself off. I would literally be laying in the bath for hours on end. And I really kind of started on a bit of a mental health decline, if I'm honest, on a bit yeah. of a downward spiral. I was unable to see a way out. A few of my friends had all unfortunately taken their own lives that year as well. Oh, wow. And I was just starting to question everything, almost like, is that where I'm headed? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's really tough to get yourself out of a pit like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the one thing I do remember is I called out to the universe one day and I just asked for a sign that things were going to get better because I was literally on the edge, basically. And I remember one day the NHS sent me to Liverpool and I love being in a hotel alone. That's my me time. So I went and got myself a hire car and the girl who served me in the hire car place, Carly, she recognised me from being on this morning. So we immediately just got on like a house on fire. We were chatting about like, you know, Love Love Island and all that. And a few months later, she opened up a crystal shop on Instagram. And because of how nice she was with me when I was in Liverpool, I thought I'm going to support her and I'm going to buy a box of five tumble stones. 
Obviously, I didn't really have a clue what they were about, yeah. but I started carrying them with me daily. And she'd recommended some crystals for grief and purpose. And I kid you not, slowly but surely, doors just started opening for me with like new opportunities. Uh, my grieving got a little easier. My mental health seemed to improve day on day. And the more I did, the more crystals I bought. And I think over the next 18 months, I had accumulated something like 200 crystals of my own. And I just remember one night thinking, you know, I'm really passionate about this. Maybe I could hey. start my own little business. You yeah. know, pairing candles with crystals, that might be a good idea. So with my last £250 in the bank, I took a chance and I bought a handful of candles from a friend and a few rough crystals. And I remember I was sat there trying to think of a name for it all, like canny crystals. And my granddad always used to say to me, Gan Canny, just before I left his house, which is kind of a Geordie way of saying, take it easy, like go yeah. steady. And I just remember hearing his voice in my head as I was trying to think of a name, just like Canny Crystals, Canny Crystals. And just like that, I launched my website, cannycrystals.co.uk, on my birthday, 30th of March, 2021. So just to put that into perspective, yeah. that was what we're talking 26 months ago now. I have just under 100,000 um, combined social media followers. My podcast is currently number one in the UK for spirituality. And it's listened to by about 24,000 people a week. Um, I've just recently completed something like my 29,000th order. And oh my I've also God. got an academy now where I'm helping others on their spiritual journey to come into their own. It's just absolutely crazy. It's just absolutely amazing. Thank you. Incredible. Just so inspiring. Just quickly, because oh. I want to make sure that everybody's completely clear. What are tumble stones? Are they called? <laughs> so tumble stones are. Yeah basically crystals that have been put through a tumble machine so i'm trying to find one i've got crystals everywhere and i don't have any tumble stones on me right now um so basically this one's been tumbled i don't know if you can see that it just means that basically like this one is rough that one is tumbled oh, so okay. it goes through a tumble machine with loads of grit and sand and it just kind of smooths the edges down so as you can see all the edges on that yeah, are quite yeah. smooth whereas this one they're quite jagged and um, what why would you do that what's like the difference between a normal a tumble stone and then a crystal why, why would you want to do that well so crystals um like natural crystals like this would emit energy of every single point that they have so if you think of an amethyst for example where yeah. amethysts have loads of jaggy bits coming off the energy is emitting like out from those points whereas when it's tumbled it's got more of a rounder balanced energy and that's why they do that Amazing. Some people prefer raw, some people prefer tumbled. It's it's all down to personal choice. Yeah. And can you feel like when you're doing your work, which we'll go deep into, yeah. the difference between the tumbled ones yeah. and the not tumbled ones? Oh yeah, I can I can definitely feel it. I think the the rough ones tend to be a bit more kind of like out there, whereas the tumbled ones are getting more of a calming energy from okay, them. It's not yeah, as yeah. harsh and yeah, but that. I kind of like the rough ones. Just, Me, I think I would. <laughs> yeah, I just put myself <laughs> but, in at the deep end at the yeah. end of the day. I love it, yeah. <laughs> oh, just amazing. And so, I mean, you've had that. What an amazing, inspiring story. Just straight off the bat. Like, it's just incredible. Thank you. Your time at home when you were a little boy growing yeah. up in, is it Newcastle? Yeah, I, I lived um, just outside of Newcastle in a yeah. little city called Durham. Um, oh, yeah, growing I know, up. yeah. Yeah, um, my great Yeah, I've lived in Newcastle for like the last 10 years now. Yeah. yeah. So you're from there. And then what was your like family home life like? So like I say, we never really had any money or anything like yeah. that. The only thing that my family did have was an abundance of love. Um, yeah. We were all trapped equally and fairly. My nana and granda kind of um, yeah. raised us yeah. children because all the mums yeah. and dads had to really work okay. to earn a living. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So. It was kind of like a, a bit of a nursery round at my nana and granddad's house on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, I think going through school as well, I, yeah. I got bullied quite a lot. Okay. Um, and I think that was predominantly just being down to being gay. Um, yeah. I never and did you know at a young age that you were gay or were you just I think fabulous I did. and basically people didn't understand it? Yeah, I think yeah. I did. But deep down inside, I probably didn't want to just admit it to myself. Yeah. Um, as you do, I think probably from the age of like nine or ten, I think I knew. Mm. But it's obviously when you don't have a gay role model or anything yeah. like that, you just think, oh, I've just got to keep this inside. So it was yeah. like years of pent up angst and anxiety sat inside of me. And I remember like one day, for example, like I don't really speak to my dad anymore, but I remember one day my dad had um, MTV on. And can you remember the music video for Christina Aguilera's Beautiful? Don't know if you remember that. There was yes, like a, a, a bit of it where types. two guys. Yeah. Yeah. 
There yeah. was just two guys that basically kiss halfway through. And I remember my dad just going, ugh, bloody gays. Do you know what I mean? And I was yeah. sat there like putting on a deep voice because I didn't want my dad to know. So I used to go to my dad's house and talk like this. Oh. And it was just so I could like disguise who I was. And yeah. it wasn't until kind of I, I pushed my relationship aside with my dad and that I actually came out to my mom's side of the family and things that I felt I could actually be myself. Wow. And how how powerful that is that even, at, you know, mm. how old were you when that happened? I was about 16, 17. At yeah. That time. So like that. You know, our parents were so taught that you know what our parents say and do are they are right. They're like the king and queen of yeah. our life, and so to have that strength and ability to go, I love you, but I, you're not serving me anymore. I can't be who I want to be. Yeah, you know, I think it's such a it's such a lesson for us all. You know, my relationship with my dad is a little bit like that. Like, <laughs> you know, what he had planned and what his vision for my life was was a million miles from what I actually wanted, and I used yeah, to always but- get in a Nicola stop showing off who do you think you are you know i was to him like oh you know dad did you enjoy it like I was, I was in fame in the west end and i did all those like amazing things on stage and i would one he would not come and then when he did come like i'd be at stage door and i'd be like what do you think and like, it's okay you know really? like, oh my god you know <laughs> and my mom was like neville neville like she was amazing can't you just tell her and he used to be like well i don't want it to get too big for her boots you know, like, oh, yeah, it's just okay. <laughs> heartbreaking though. But, you know, like we're shaped so much by like that time and that thing. So, you know, I always, when I hear these stories of people breaking away, because oh. I have friends who were older than me, you know, mid forties with a family still constrained by what their mom and dad think. Yeah. I actually have a friend, I'm still going to say the name, I have a friend who was a, a man and a woman, a guy, married a married couple and you know he was being all straight and everything and then his mum died and as soon as his mum died he came out as gay and now he's in a happy relationship with a man that he's always wanted but he was so he played the part that she yeah. wanted him to play even getting married you it's know? mad and isn't it, it when you're yeah. just trying to conform constantly to your parents yeah. it's yeah. like when i when i actually came out um to my mom and all her side of the family like my nana and granda, who I thought would be a bit more weird about it, they were actually really, really accepting. Yeah. So they they rang my mom and they were like, "Well, do you want to come round? Our Martin's got something he needs to talk to you about." Oh. And I told my mom, and she just got in the car. I got in the car. We drove round to her house. She didn't speak the entire way, and I and just remember that night. She came up to my bedroom and went, "Look, you're my son. At the end of the day, that's all that matters, and that's all that ever will matter." Yeah. And she just gave me a big hug and we obviously both cried it out. But I remember the next day coming home from school and there was a priest sat there in the living room and she'd gone to the church, got the priest round and there was all these pamphlets on the table being like, what gay means? And she was like, did you know that Elton John's gay? And I'm like, yes, mom. I think everyone knows Elton John's gay. And she was like, did you know this celebrity's gay? And Graham Norton and Dale Whitten? And I'm like, yes, mom. Um, and she had all these pamphlets and everything and she went to the church because she was petrified that someone was going to throw a brick through our window because they knew that oh, I was gay. That was her biggest concern. Wow. And she was like, well, I don't really know how to kind of tell yeah. people that my son is gay. So she'd gone to the church about it. Oh, my God, bless her. Well, you know, I feel like the world is so different now. I mean, yeah. listen, we're in a complete bubble, you and I, because we are living the, the life that we want. So therefore, we're surrounding by the, the people that we want. But I'm sure there are people like you and I struggling in that time. But social media, as much as people hate it, I think it's pretty amazing because yeah. it allows you to find people that you can relate to. You yeah. know, but 16-year-old Mark had Instagram and could find all these fabulous people living their life. Like my best friend, Stuart and Francis, happily married couple, two dads with a you know, family. You'd go, oh, this is just so normal. It's not yeah. something to be ashamed of. And the possibilities for myself are massive. You know, I yeah. don't have to dim. Yeah, so, the power of community is I know. so powerful, honestly. It's like um, I have a community app as well, Manifest with Mart. And all of my members say I always just felt so spiritually alone until yeah. I joined this app. And now we've got this kind of community. We all get together. We, you know, there's all these forums to post on and everyone just kind of comments on each other's things. And yeah. it's just nice that we're surrounded by like-minded people because you don't feel alone and you feel like yeah. you can be yourself around them. And yeah. if something happens that's weird that you might not be comfortable talking to your friends or family about, you can post it in there and everyone's like, oh yeah, that's happened to me before. And you don't feel alone. 
Yeah, and I think love having that. something like that when I was 16 would have really, really helped me. I think yeah. all I had when I was 16, can you remember Face Party? Yeah, probably oh, showing no. you it. Oh, you're probably showing your age if you do. <laughs> but um, we had something party. called Face Party. You had you had the the ability to basically put three photos on of yourself, and that was it basically. And you could like be friends <laughs> with random people. So I just used to go on the search bar and just type in gay, <laughs> so then like <laughs> I could find other gay people because I was like I didn't know who to talk to. And yeah. I think I, there's like two or three people that I joined on there that I still talk to to this day. But oh. it's really weird because we've all just grown up from like yeah. different parts of the UK. It's really yeah. weird. And also, do you know what I feel like back in the day, you know, if you if you were different, so like, for example, <laughs> I was so ambitious, I wanted to be a performer. If right. you're like the only gay in the village, for example, you had to move out of the village, right? And really go to the yeah. London or New York to find other like-minded people. The beauty of the internet has brought that community to, you know, you can stay where you want yeah. to be <laughs> and actually be part of a community, like you're saying. So, you can be a mum, be whoever you want to be, but online you can really express yourself and get all your needs met, not just by living in a big city where the other, you know, crazies and weirdos and fabulous people yeah. like that we would have put ourselves in are. And yeah. so that's amazing. So tell me a little bit more about your, um, like your kind of childhood. So you're, you come out at 16 mm -hmm. and then is that when you're at, you're at school? How's the school life? Do you get good grades? Do you have a vision for your life or you... Just yeah, kind of going along. That's the thing. See, I never really had a vision for my life. Yeah. And it's really weird because obviously that's all I deal with these days, yeah. like vision boarding and looking to the future. And I think when I left school, the only thing that was on my mind is that all of my friends were going to uni. Mm. But I can vaguely remember someone talking about how expensive uni was. And because my family never had any money, I didn't understand that the costs were absorbed, like, and you pay them off once you get a job and things like that. And I and just remember someone saying to me, are you going to uni? And I just went, no, because I didn't want to put that debt onto my mom. Yeah, 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 I get so it. So I kind of just went straight into employment. I think I w started working on a fish counter at Asda at one point, and I was like, nah, I can't do this. <laughs> used to come home stinking a crab every night. Oh. <laughs> um, and then I went to work at a hairdresser's, and I think I worked there for about two years. Mm. And then I just went into loads of little admin roles before I ended up in the NHS. But... Yeah, I never really had a plan for life. I never knew where I was headed. And I do think that's because my family weren't very well off. So my mum never went to university, for yeah, example, yeah. and not neither did her sisters. So it was kind of like, okay, I'm just following in the footsteps again yeah, of my parents. Yeah, and yeah. just my mum just wanted me to get a, a care job at the local care home or, you know, work in the freezer shop up the street. And I said, why? And she was like, because it's in walking distance. So it, it, it wasn't, I know, I know it was like, I'm yeah. not going to get a job just because it's in walking distance yeah. of home. I yeah. can drive. Yeah. But yeah, I think when I told her that I was moving to Newcastle about 10 years ago, I remember saying, well, there's plenty of jobs around here. You don't have to yeah. move to Newcastle just to get a job. And I'm like, yeah. it's not just about that. I just need to spread my wings a little bit. Like I've been confined for like 25 yeah. years of my life. Do you know what I mean? It's hard, I isn't it? Enough, but I completely, completely relate. When I was in London, my, um, I was... And at the point where I was like, I didn't want to be a performer anymore. And I was building my online business. And it was that bridge where my online business hadn't kind of exploded yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd quit all the on, like the dancing jobs because they weren't making me feel good. And I had like a nothing to my name. Yeah. And I was like, Dad, you know, just telling anyone, well, Nicola, it's about time you come home, get your head out the clouds and just get yourself a normal job. And I was like, well, what would I do? Like, and he was like, well, you know, just, just go to Tesco and then work your way up the ladder. Yeah. Because he felt that that was secure and normal and, you know, and, and his, it's not that they're unkind, but it's like, that is what they believe to be like a, the right thing. Yeah. You know, imagine we listen to them. Like, you know. I know, that's the thing. So I, I think, obviously working in the NHS, I did yeah. that for 15 years. And when I started Canny Crystals in 2021, I didn't actually quit the NHS until 2022. Oh, wow. So I had a full year of literally working two full-time jobs. Wow. And it's bloody hard, let me tell yeah. you. But I was working every Saturday and Sunday as well. So it was seven days a week. So I wasn't getting any time to do anything for me. And I remember specifically saying to my mom, I'm thinking about quitting the NHS. You can't, you can't. Yeah. That's all yeah. I got. And then I told my nana and she went, you're going to quit the NHS to sell rocks. And <laughs> just didn't get it. Didn't get it at all. And I'm like, nana, it's a um, lot more in depth yeah. than just selling rocks. It's all mindset. And I've got the academy. I've got my membership. 
And she was like, well, where do you find them? Do you just dig them up down the tine? As if I was just going up and down with a trolley boat or something. Do you know what I mean? Getting them or from like the Or handing out tine. leaflets, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So um, I, I totally get that. But yeah. what I've come to learn is that's their limiting beliefs. Exactly. That's, that's what's kind of been imposed on me yeah. all my life. That you've got to be in a secure job. You've got to work nine to five. You have to work hard for mm. money. When in actual fact, you don't. Who yeah. who says that? Who yeah. wears it raw? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. just what's been imprinted onto us from yeah. our parents, our grandparents, and all the ancestors before. Yeah, it's like the after the war mindset that is Revit. still, you know, that that feelingness, that heaviness, that life is hard, work is hard, and you've got it. And if you're you're not succeeding unless you're struggling. Yeah. And yeah. and and I get that. I totally totally. And this part of me is still now. Like I love working hard. But it's, I feel like it's that, the feeling underneath me because it's like, it could be taken away at any point because yeah. without realizing it, my mom and dad have imposed, that, you know, I'm the creator of it so that I've got to then, you know, and then I'm like, just relax, Nicola. I've manifested my life. I visualized my life so far. I can do it again, you know, even if it was all taken away. So yeah. your mom, what's her name, by the way? She sounds, Angela. I just love her. Angela. Angela. <laughs> oh, Angela, I hope you listen to this podcast. Because sure, she doesn't even listen to mine. <laughs> <laughs> but I just, it's like, I feel like for so many people will be listening to this, you know, if you're in, in your teenagers or your 20s and they can relate to that pressure. And even if, you know, your parents have high expectations for you, like I know so many of my friends, right, you've got to be a doctor, you've got to be a lawyer, <laughs> like they're really smart and they're like, well, actually, you know, I've got this other interest. No, you've got to do these things. And you know, seven years into, you know, law school, they're like, what am I doing? Yeah. You know, so your story is so inspiring because it's like, okay, I hear you, but I'm going to do this anyway, you yeah. know, and, and have the power to do that. So let's talk about <laughs> Canny Crystal. So let's go into the depth of it. How did it, you went to your friend, you'd got, you've got your, you know, your things, your crystals. How did you then go, this could be a business? How did you start like going into that? I think, like I say, I, I spent my last £250 in my bag yeah. and I bought myself some candles, paired them with some crystals. And I'm quite techy. It's not like... Oh, it's okay. Not, do yeah. you know what I mean? I'm not like kind of the person that would just be like, oh, I don't know how to do this. I kind of like and go and sample and different things. So I think I just went on a Shopify and there was a 30-day free trial and I just thought to myself, you know what, let's just go for it. See what <laughs> it's like. If I don't like it after 30 days, I can always cancel. And... I set up the website. The domain was like £7 or something for the year. And it was next to nothing. Do you know what I mean? So I just thought, well, I can only trial it, Kana. And I set up a little Instagram because obviously that's free as well. So I was just using all these free resources. And um, I think I launched it. And the next day when I woke up, I had something like 16 orders on my first day. And that was just from sharing it on my own personal Instagram and Facebook being like, look, this is what happened to me mm-hmm. by using crystals. This is what could happen to you if you buy them kind of thing. Amazing. And I think after the first month, I think I turned over like £3,000. And I thought that's more than I was getting in the NHS. Yeah. And obviously I had overheads and stuff like that. But it just kept growing and growing. Yeah. And it got to the point where I, like I say, I, I'd been work doing it for about a year. And I was like, I can't cope with doing this and the NHS. Yeah. It's a lot of work. Do you know what I mean? Because... People just think, oh, he just sells crystals. You've got to literally source them from like ethical places. So I speak with like 14 family run mines across the across the world. So you've got to obviously have wow. FaceTime calls yeah. and like they've got to show you what they've got. You've got to like shop around. There's minimum spends and stuff. Then you've got to pay all your customs fees. Takes like six, seven weeks to get over here. Wow. And then when something arrives, it'll be a pallet with 300 kilograms of stones on just outside your front door. And then (laughs) because we live in a townhouse, I would have to take them right to the top floor of the house and things like that. And things just grew and grew. And it got to the point where I was like, you know what? I literally cannot cope with doing my NHS role at the same time. So I, I hired myself a life coach to kind of, get the grips you know with like which direction i was headed and i think after my first session i just came home and i was like i'm going to hand me notice in with the nhs oh my God. this is definitely the direction i need yeah. to go in it's something i feel really passionate about it's something that i enjoy doing and just like that two months later i had no sales whatsoever on my website no sales everything ah. dipped and it was almost like the universe was saying you're worried about no sales. Here you go. Have here you no go. Help. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, I need to do something drastic here. 
And I just remember meditating one day and I think three days off the bat, I'd had zero sales and I'd just finished my job in the NHS. I'd just got my final pay from them and I visualized and I was like, I need some help, please. I need some abundance, send it all my way. Sat with my pyrite, my citrine, my moldavite and stuff like that. And suddenly it just popped into my head that I could message someone else and be part of their podcast. That was just the first thing that popped into my head. So I thought, okay, taking that inspired action, I went onto Instagram and who pops up? Francesca Amber. So I sent Fran a little cheeky message and I just said, hi, Fran, I know you don't know me, but I'm Canny Crystals. Um, I would love to come on your podcast, talk about all things manifesting, law of attraction, crystal healing. And she messaged me back within seconds saying, that is so, so weird. I've just been meditating and I was just, just thinking, I could do a podcast about crystal healing. And I was like, things just li- like, they just slotted in perfectly. So I went on her podcast and I drove down to her house. We recorded both podcasts back to back. They both went out the Friday after and I woke up to over £7,000 in sales overnight. And I said to her, it was all because of her basically that this happened. And the, the they just kept building up the orders. And at one point I had something like 400 orders to fulfill And I was like, I need an office space. I need something to get this out of the house so that I can switch off. Because orders were coming in at like midnight and I was like lay in bed, not doing anything, thinking I'll just go and pack an order. Of course, of course. before I knew it, I'd be on till two or three in the morning packing others. So I got myself a little office down the quayside in Newcastle. And um, that month, I hit £31,000 in a month. So it was averaging out at like £1,000 a day. Now, to go from £30,000 in the NHS for a whole year to £30,000 in a month, it just made sense. Like, this is exactly why I quit the NHS. Like, it's not all about the money, don't get us wrong. But when you see it like that in black and white, you're like, this is a no-brainer. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Don't get me wrong, though, for the last year and a half that I've been quit the NHS, I've grafted. And it's not like I've just sat here and just thought, this money's going to fall into my lap. Like, I have grafted. Some days I work, like, 18-hour days. Um, I don't even get to go out for a dog walk or anything like that. My dog walk by my fiancé, for example. And there's some days that I literally just sit behind a laptop all day and just get it done. But luckily now, I've been able to retire my mum. So I've had enough money to kind of just say, well, here you go, take early retirement, because she was working in a care home, like looking after old people. And it was just starting to affect her as well. Um, So I retired my man in December for her 60th birthday. And I also took on my first member of staff as well, Jade, who packs all my orders. So last week, for example, I was in Northern Ireland to see um, all my fiance's family. And it was just so lovely that... I didn't have to be in the office. Yeah. Like I was I was working but from elsewhere in the world. And yeah. I had loads of admin to do. Don't get us wrong. Cause I, like I say, I've got the academy and things. And it does keep me ticking over massively. But it's like I know that all the orders were being dealt with by in the office by Jade. And that was just amazing yeah. to me. So I'm like, I feel so grateful that in a year and a half I've built it to the point where it's I can amazing. kind of step back and work from wherever now. Yeah. Oh love. It's the dream, isn't it? It is the dream. You are living the dream. Can we talk about, because this is not where I'm experienced at all, crystals are very new to me. I don't know the names of things. I kind of like them because they look pretty. (laughs) So let's use me as an example. I'm coming to you. I'm like, right, I want to change my life. I want to be better. I want to elevate in every area. How do I use crystals to do that? So crystals are energy, just like mm-hmm. everything else. Everything is made up of energy in some way, shape or form. So crystals kind of act as like a little power hold for healing, kind of like a battery, if you'd like to think of it okay. that way, because they allow positive and exciting energy to flow into the body. So some people basically think that, you know, crystals might just carry the power to induce a placebo effect in the body, which is scientifically proven anyway. But I think that they obviously they have, they have their own vibration, their own frequency, And just from like acting like a magnet, crystals can absorb the negative energies, welcoming fresh vibes. And because they're extracted from the earth, they're going to harness, you know, the energy of the sun, the moon, the oceans, and they're all natural healing energies. So they're going to improve our state. So when you place or you hold a crystal kind of over your body on the specific chakra, it's going to interact with those chakras and it's going to promote physical and mental wellness. So if you use them in a certain way, they can improve your concentration, your creativity, 
and they can also promote physical, emotional, and spiritual cleansing. So when I worked in mental health, for example, in the <laughs> NHS, someone came in one day into our service users, they did a little crystal healing masterclass, and I specifically remember thinking, what a load of bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> and that was like about, yeah. probably about 10 years ago, because that's what most people think. Yeah. Look, but what happens is most people will quite happily buy a crystal like this and then not know what to do with it. Yeah. So with cleansing and charging, there are a few different ways. You've probably heard of a few of them, but it all depends on you. So one of the most popular ways to do it is to, you know, use the energy of the sun or the energy of the full moon. So you just leave them out on a windowsill mm -hmm. and they will just absorb that. Some people like to even pass the crystals through smoke from an incense stick or sage. Some like to just visualize a white light encapsulating the crystal in their hand. Some even use something like a Tibetan singing bowl and let the sound wash away yeah. the impurities. Some bury them overnight in the garden. Some go to the sea to wash them in the river. It's I say this all the time about spiritual practices. It really is whatever feels best intuitively yeah. to you. So when it comes to caring for and working with the crystals, some people store them on shelves around the houses. Some people keep them in a bowl. Some people keep them in their bras, you know, just to always be around their yeah. energy. But I don't think personally you can just leave them to sit on a shelf in your house and expect them to work day in, day out for yeah. all eternity. Because that's what most people do. They'll buy a crystal, they'll put it on the desk or they'll put it on a shelf and then they'll just pass crystal healing off because they've tried it and it didn't work. Yeah. But like everything else, you've got to put in some form of work. Yeah. So if you think of them as like batteries, for example, sooner or later, they're going to need charging. So if you put your phone up on a shelf and you left it there for two weeks, do you really think that you're going to still be getting calls and texts two weeks later? Yeah. No, it's the same that. as crystals. Yeah. You've got to give them some love. You've got to charge them up. So maybe once a month, I'll go around and because I've got so many of them around the house, it's pr practically impossible to get them all in one spot. <laughs> so I tend to just light a sage stick or a me Tibetan singing bowl and I'll just walk right through the house just like chanting kind of positive affirmations like um, everything that comes to me in my life is what I deserve. Mm. Um, I'm abundant. I am powerful. That kind of thing. And I'll just walk through the house like mm. chanting those positive affirmations yes. and letting the smoke of the sage kind of yeah. cleanse over the crystals. Yeah. Yeah, and then when I do want to work with them, like so today, for example, I've chosen these three here that I've got, and I just chose these three because I knew I was coming into this um, podcast and I knew I was quite nervous, so I chose citrine because that's all about joy and happiness, and I just wanted a big smile on my face. I've chosen green aventurine because that's good for all-rounder mm -hmm. health and abundance and, mm -hmm. and manifestations, and then I've also chose a piece of Moldavite, which is quite a bit of a scary one, people think. Um, but it's basically a tech titan. It's supposed to fast forward your life like 10 years into the future in one month's time, basically. So I love to work with this because it's really time accelerating. It's really healing. Um, but just choosing crystals for your day to day. So this morning, I just yes. sat with these yes. for two, three minutes, yes. closed my eyes, set my intentions, you know, just talk to them like, yeah. like you would any other thing with yeah. how you want them to support you in your life today. I love that. And so when you first got started, you kind of ordered from your friend just to support mm. her. Then how did you know what to do with them? Well, luckily, um, she was the one that gave me a little, um, she gave me a little instruction sheet as well, because I was Amazing. like, I honestly yeah. don't have a clue what to do with them. So because of that, I now also um, send them out with every single order that I give out as well, Yeah, because it is hard for people that yeah. are just starting out. So I've got a load of information <laughs> on my website, for example, on there. Uh, which tells you what each crystal's about, you know, how to use them, how to cleanse them, kind of like what I've just been talking about there. Yeah. But at one point, I thought to myself, you know what, people actually need kind of a crash course. Yeah. So I think it was the very first course I actually put together on my academy. Um, so like a crystals masterclass. And I just thought this basically encapsulates Perfect. everything yeah. that someone needs to know about crystal healing what they need to get, what properties are for what crystal, what the, what aligns with the chakras of each one. Do you know what I mean? And just so that someone can pick it up and think, okay, I know exactly what to be doing now because I think that's what's missing. Yeah, and it's kind I of agree. dumped a few generations, I think, as well because I remember growing up, going to, say, Whitby, for example, which is a, a bit of a coastal seaside town mm. around here, and they have loads of crystal shops, but they never ever told you what the crystals were for or what they were yeah. even called and stuff. Yeah. So I remember picking them up when I was younger, thinking, oh, they're pretty. But I had no idea because it's kind of skipped a generation. Like my mum had no idea that crystals yeah. was a thing. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, but you're so I think it right. Used, it used to be seen as quite a hippie thing. Yeah. 
But it's like what I see now as like hippie things of like even just people walking around like traditional hippies where they would take the socks and shoes off and walk around like prayers and flowers and things like that. That is literally mindfulness. Yeah. So when you think of it, it's just modern day mindfulness. Fullness, you're grounding yeah. yourself to nature and you're going out there and you're looking at flowers and plants. You're just grounding yourself in the present moment. And how do you use them to visualize and manifest? Is it just like almost like you'll do the practice and they are an add-on to enhance like you said, like a, a okay. battery pack to kind of get the visualization going even more. Yeah, exactly okay. that. I just think that um, when you visualize, obviously visualization is the most powerful thing that we can do as human beings. Yeah. I think when you visualize, just to have something in your hand is kind of an anchor yeah. as to what it is. So, for example, like I was saying there, I know that when I'm looking at this, I'm remembering a smile on this podcast yeah. because it's, it's kind of an anchor for me for joy and happiness. But it's supposed to um, align with those frequencies inside of your body as well to give you, your body that natural boost. Because like I said, they are natural rocks. They come from the earth. Yeah. It's just giving us that natural boost of energy that we need. Yeah. So I think just by holding them in your hand while you're visualizing, you're just going to supercharge your manifestations, yeah. basically. Oh my God, I need to get myself some of those. You do. You really I do. do. I can't believe you're on it already. No. I don't want to start living in Ibiza. Which is a, massive for crystals. Huge. There is a place here called Crystal Mountain. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I, I haven't been there. I haven't been there. You need to go. Because I feel like I'd go, but I want to... It's like, you know, when you visit a new country and you walk yeah. around and you're like, this is all amazing, but I don't know anything about it. Yeah. I felt like... I f I've always... I felt a niggle. I was like, I need to know more. I need to know more. And yeah. I've manifested you <laughs> into this conversation and it, I know that there'll be a time of like right now I can go because I really want to take my little girls Minnie and Marva oh, age four and five and when we do the little like walk around shops here like the little hippie markets yeah crystals are everywhere yeah they are they really are I remember when I was yeah. in a uh, last uh, couple of years ago now and th there was just crystal market stalls everywhere yeah but yeah. you know what it is with you saying about um your little kids as well it is so such a good thing to get like children into it because yeah I've got a few nieces and nephews that are basically around about like three to seven year old yeah. and just starting them off early. Like one of them's really anxious at school. So I was like, here's some amethyst. Here's some howlite. Then another one was like, oh, her confidence has been not quite a lot lately. Someone was calling her four eyes at school for wearing glasses. Yeah. I give her them an opal light. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And that's for like confidence and self-esteem. And they've just got them like on the backpacks, for example, like as a key ring. And yeah. I just thought, well, what harm is it doing? Yeah. Do you know what yeah, I mean? It's yeah, not harming exactly. anyone. It's just a little stone. But if that can really help them to come out of their shell on their way into like adult hose, mm. so be it. And I think as well, like even if they don't quite understand it or believe in it or none, it's more like okay. my uncle or my mum has given me this as a power to remind me to be something, yeah. you know, that which then... Yeah. And it even opens up that conversation. You know, I didn't even, like, before The Secret, the same as you, that was my gateway. Yeah. Before The Secret, I didn't know, I didn't even know I had a mindset. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. I just had a brain that made me eat and drink and think about <laughs> things. Like, I didn't know anything else. So if that is a great way, because my daughters are obsessed with their, you know, they put it under their pillow and then they talk to it and they have it around yeah. their neck. You know, if that's, a perfect way to go into it i just think you know it's a conversation that that then they won't have to get to a, pro a point where like us we go right i need to change my life it's not working yeah. they'd already be in that they're already be in the life that they want from you know like a, a young age 100 percent. i couldn't agree more yeah and so then tell me what as part of your <laughs> you started you know selling your boxes with your crystals Kind of like a package, like an introduction package. Is that how it was? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it was, yeah. And then you've added on so much. You oh, know, God, like yeah. I think I'm trying to niche down a bit at the minute because I've gone too far. I think in business, it's hard, isn't it? Because especially with being new to business, yeah. like I've worked like in the public sector for so long. So coming over in a private, it was a bit weird because I didn't yeah. know how businesses worked. Yeah. I didn't know I had to like really? submit tax returns and file for VAT <laughs> and stuff like that I should have got a business coach in all honesty when I first started and it is quite scary especially yeah. when they start coming down on you and things yeah because I think the first few months I was like I don't need to register for that and then they're like yeah you do you've already whacked the threshold and I'm like oh okay um but it is hard isn't it it's just like you're just trying to to muddle along in business 
Um, I and totally you forgot what you, you asked the question. No, sorry. <laughs> do you find, I think, what else have you got going on? So, obviously, you've got your membership. Do you find that you have all these ideas and then you're like, I've got to do this, I've got to do that, I've got to set up this? You know, so just tell us, like, the platform that you have. You've got, you're selling the products, you have your podcast. Yes. What else? Like, how else could people so be involved? So, I have the Canon Crystals Academy as well. Okay. That's all my self development uh, workshops, that kind of thing. Then I also have Manifest with Mart, which is my community yeah. app. And um, that's basically like where we go live every month on the new moon to set intentions. There's like one-to-one coaching, um, loads of different things like that. Obviously, I had the podcast as well. Um, I've recently just been and um, spoke at Stella McCartney's Pride event oh, in London. Oh, yes. It's so- absolutely crazy. I don't even know how that came about. It was just a huge manifestation, I think. I wanted some public speaking. Yeah. And then that came out of the woodworks. Yeah. And then, um, and was I'm that also, your first like speaking gig? As such? It was my second, yeah. Okay. But yeah, I just I don't know where I want to take the business next, and that's why it's a bit harder for me because, like I say, I'm not business minded. Yes. So I'm working with a strategist from next week who hopefully is going to be able to give me a bit more, you know, like a bit more insight as to which direction I want to take yeah. them in. Because my accountant said to me last week, "Where do you see yourself in two years?" Mm-hmm. I was like, "Well, I don't know." Yeah. He was like, where'd you see yourself in a year? And I was like, well, I don't know. And he was like, what about next month? And I was like, I honestly do not know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. kind of one of them people that starts a project, gets 75% of the way through it. And I think, oh, I could do this. And I Same. leave that project and I've got shiny object syndrome <laughs> from one thing to the next. Yeah. But I've got about, I think I must have about 30 or 40 different ideas floating around on my ideas list. That I could easily finish in a day, but I procrastinate so much by looking for the next best thing. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm trying to niche down because, um, like I say, I tried to be everything to everyone. And I think um, at one point last year, I had over 900 products on the website. And I was like, obviously, wow. I'm in a tiny little office. I was like, I don't need 900 products. There are products that are still sat there from the day that when I opened. Yeah. So I just thought, let's put them in the sale. Yeah. niche down a little bit you know my best sellers are the crystal jewelry the candles okay. my yeah. journal that i created and um, my well-being journal that kind of thing so i think i'm just going to niche down on that kind of area and then at least you're showing a bit of expertise aren't you because yeah, you're dealing yeah. with those items on a day-to-day yeah. basis yeah and do you feel like so because what i didn't really realize from your social media that actually yes you're crystals but actually you are a personal development coach. Like it's crystals wrapped in a personal development mm. thing. So, I mean, like you could be like the English version of, you know, you've got your Tony Robbins or, you know, these type <laughs> of people. Like, is that something that you you started with the crystals and then you've gone down that journey exploring more into personal development? 100%. I think and none of, like what you were saying there, I didn't even know I had a mindset until right, I read the right secret. <laughs> that, that is so, so true when you pick yeah. the nail on the head there. But I think until crystals came about, I wasn't really interested okay. in reading other books yeah. or anything like that. And now I've like, I've read so many books in the last couple of years, not just about crystals, but about, you know, manifesting and mindset and mm. spirituality mm. and procrastination. And I mean, uh, there's even like this random one here that we just I'll found it in my partner's, my partner's house over the weekend. And um, so, yeah, just like random books like mm. that, I have like, I'm just absorbing them so much. And I think that when you do that, it kind of comes hand in hand with, yeah. you know, mindset and spirituality. Yeah. So I thought rather than rebrand as something totally like different, I'll just call it Canny Crystals Manifestation Mindset Spirituality. Yeah. So yeah. that's kind of what I rebranded as rather than just Canny Crystals because a lot of people just think, oh, it is just crystal healing. Yeah. But it, it's not. It's so much more than that. Yeah. And I think when people realize that there is more to life, they get sucked down this rabbit hole anyway. Yeah, you're so right. It's like you just need a hook. The crystals mm-hmm. are your hook. And yeah. then and then the the world of basically what's possible get reels you in, isn't it? And yeah. it's just I just remember my first kind of experience in reading the, reading these books, like The Secret or The Magic or um, You Can Heal Your Life, all of these things. And I just remember thinking, I can be, do and have anything I want yeah. in life. And I remember the year that I discovered The Secret, I must have got like 50 copies and I handed them out to all of my friends. And i got a really good friend of mine now who lives in Barcelona. She's got this fabulous life. She's killing it on TikTok. She's a photographer. And she wrote a post the other day. She was like, I just want to you know, message shout out to my friend Nicola, who 
gave me a book that changed my life. And, you know, the, 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 like passing of that on, it's like when you first learn, you, you can't help but like shout about it and tell everybody yeah. because you're like, this is the answer, you know, and, and so many people kind of know, but they don't really know. And then when you go <laughs> deep into it, there's just so much there. So just tell yeah. me, Mark, like, what do you, you know, in your, so you've got your community and your like workshop stuff, what do you teach and, and kind of explore in there? So I have um, different workshops. So I, mm. for example, like I mentioned earlier, I've got the Crystals Masterclass, which is basically everything you need to know to get started on your crystal journey. Then I also have a Manifest in Money Masterclass. That's a six week workshop, basically. Mm. It's like over 25 different modules. Because it's one thing that I get messaged about the most, if yeah. you know what I mean. Like people want to say, "Well, you know, you've done this. So how have you done this? And yeah. what did you put into place?" So it's kind of a mix of loads of different spiritual practices as well as like practical ones, like tracking mm. and things like that. Um, over twenty-five um lift different lessons basically, and there's a community built into that as well. Um, and just quickly, one second, tracking. Yeah. I know you're a passionate tracker. Yeah, I mean... Can you just explain what that is? Because that is not who I am. And I know that it's the uh, domestic um, thing. I know. See, so tell I, me. When I worked in the NHS, yeah. we had spreadsheets for everything, as yeah. you can imagine. Yeah. And by the end of it, I was like, oh, who needs a spreadsheet? But actually, when you stop tracking your progress, you can't gauge yeah. where you've come from. Or, it's like when you, you're losing weight mm. and you're off, you're wanting to gain weight, whatever it is. You set foot on those scales. If you do that day in, day out, you're just kind of like watching yourself fluctuate up and down ever so slightly. But if you track that over, a, a say, a, a number of months, mm. you might have like gained a stone or you might have lost a stone. But because you're only fluctuating tiny little amounts, it doesn't actually look like yeah, anything, yeah. but it all mounts up. So that's kind of how I see with money as well. Because I always think, you know, oh, this hasn't been a great month. I've only made £15,000. I know that's a really off, weird thing to say. But if I say to myself, oh, I've only made £15,000 this month. But then I look at my incomings and outgoings. I might have made, you know, £1,000 from Amazon. I might have made a £5,000 from coaching. It might just be £15,000 as one lump sum from crystal sales. Yeah, yeah. But I'll have actually made about thirty or £40,000. And I'm like, yeah. oh. But because you just see it in dribs and drabs, unless you're physically tracking what's going in and what's going out, I don't think you can truly like kind of get to grips with what's actually going in and out of your bank. Yeah. So I think tracking is a massive one for me. Yeah. And so just yeah. a few examples. What is in that wealth masterclass? Like what where do you begin? Like how do you teach someone to basically <laughs> change their mindset and all of their limiting beliefs about money? Well, a lot of it is to do with that. So the first um, the first module, for example, is all about learning your money history and your money past. Okay. So what were your parents, what were their first thoughts about money? Because yeah. my mum used to say to me, you know, like I would go to put like a pound coin in my mouth and I'd go like that and she'd smack it and she'd go, don't do that, it's dirty. So I grew up thinking oh, the pounds were dirty. Um, do you know what I mean? That kind of thing. So immediately yeah. you're in that psyche yeah. of money is dirty or money is hard to come by, yeah. or you have to work hard for money, yeah. or, you know, you can't eat all them biscuits. We, we, weren't, we weren't born, like, with loads of money. We weren't born rich. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. And mine was, later, yeah, mine money. was, my dad was like, oh, look at him with his flash car showing off. Yeah, yeah. Um, and like, oh, you know, they, they might have money, but they're not kind like us. Yeah. <laughs> like, if you've got money, you're horrible. And if yeah. you're poor, you're kind. <laughs> you immediately go to yeah. those, don't you? So you build yeah. up all these limiting beliefs. So the first module is like exactly that. Discovering your limiting beliefs beyond that. Okay. Uh, how to work through them, getting them all out there and kind of releasing them and letting go. And then it gets onto the fun part. So it's, you know, using feng shui to kind of like raise your abundance around your house. Using EFT and tapping. Um, using crystal healing there are so many different lessons in that uh, masterclass and like I say it's over a six week period yeah but you can just join at any time um but then as well as the money manifest in masterclass i also have my one-to-one -one coaching mm -hmm. which is something that i just recently added in and it was just because people were messaging me constantly asking me question after question after question and then every now and again, they would just disappear off the face of the earth. And I'd be like, I've literally spent about six or seven hours of my time messaging yeah, you yeah, backwards yeah. and forwards on calls and things like that. And then it's just gone to a dead end. So I thought I'm going to do a little discovery call just for an hour. 
<laughs> and I was offering it for free. And people just said, you know what? You should really do like a, a 10 week program or something. So I looked into it and I launched it. And I've currently got like five students on there, which I know isn't much, but it is my Massive. high ticket yeah. offer. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I, I charge 1,500 basically um, for 10 sessions. And I've got five people on there and they are all manifesting like manically. Yeah. It's amazing like to see it. Yeah. They, yeah. They're getting so much of what they want. Because not everyone's goal is going to be money or yeah. the flash car yeah. or the flash house. Some people just want, you know, a loving partner to spend the life yeah. with. Some people just want health and happiness for their family. And it is all dependent on what it is that you want to, yeah. to manifest. So by me giving all this podcast advice yeah. on, you know, this is how to manifest money. This yeah. is how to manifest love. Yeah. If that's not what they're wanting, they can work with, with me one-to-one -one and get the most out of that. Yeah. Oh my God, you are changing lives, really. It's, it's amazing. It's so weird when people say that to me because I'm like, am I? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's my own like, beliefs. <laughs> of course, of course. And but like two years in, like just yeah. think of what you can create. And what I just love as well is that, and I think so many people, um, and, and there are people that I know here in Aretha, who it's like, I'm spiritual and I give everything, but I'm poor. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's that really like you can't be spiritual and connected and enlightened and also have money. Yeah. And you and Francesca have nailed that platform. That there's, like. There's something that um, one of my favorite authors, Denise Duffield Thomas, I don't mm -hmm. know if you've heard of Denise. Yeah. Um, so she has a book called uh, Get Rich, Lucky Bitch. And Love. that kind of changed my perception on money. And in it, she states, yeah. I serve, yeah. I deserve. Yeah. And I have that at the center of my vision board because I often think to myself, you know, like anyone could get this, this information that I'm talking about crystals. You could get that off Google if you really um, wanted to. Yeah. Or you could come to me where it's all in one place mm -hmm. and I'm telling it from a real perspective. I have my free podcast weekly. Do you know what I mean? I've got loads of free resources coming up for the rest of the year. And you could support a bitch and like, go with yeah. me. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I just keep thinking to myself, well, why would people do that when it's free on yeah. Google? But then I think, well, I'm giving my time. So I serve. Yeah. I deserve. I deserve. And I just keep on repeating that to myself all the time because the limiting beliefs do creep in yeah. all the time. Yeah. Where you're thinking, well, anyone could do this. But in actual fact, I'm the one that's doing it. People are listening to me. So I deserve this. And I yeah. do deserve it. Like it's only recently that I've come to kind of come to terms with that because wow. I did find it uneasy like yeah. taking money off people for a course that I recorded like three months ago and it's still yeah. making money now and I'm like well that shouldn't be allowed surely because the course is there it's yeah. already done but so yeah I get true. it so true so so true and it's that like <laughs> I have that same feeling because I'm in the point now with my podcast it's like what's next how do I level what? up how do I create you know, I can keep doing this. I love it, you know, yeah. but I want to create more from it. But then you yeah. have that thing and it's like, oh God, I'm going to charge people for for that. Yeah. And I come from a network marketing background. And that's kind of how I, that was like my ladder to, to change my life. And, you know, all the personal development and all the coaching, that was actually free. Yeah. And so I have that belief that I've got to give and give and give yeah. and give for free. Yeah. And so it is really like that quote, I serve, therefore I deserve. I feel like that this is like a defining moment. It is a changing my yeah. Once you get into that mindset yeah. and you realize yeah. that you are worthy of it all. Yeah. It's like back in January when I first <laughs> launched the Academy, I my first course was called 31 Days of Gratitude. And it was just, it was my version of the magic, basically. Yeah. So for 31 days across January, I was going to do a podcast live for five minutes a day for the 31 days and i recorded them all back in december on the lead up to the start of january and then i thought to myself actually i'm going to charge three pound for this because this has taken me most of december yeah. lots of time between christmas and new year getting everything set up this has taken me a hell of a lot of yeah. my own personal time do i really want to give this away for free when i'm already given the podcast every single week 30 minutes for free so I put three pound on it and I think I sold like yes. 2,000 people's like access to it. Amazing. And I was like, three pound is nothing it's really, nothing. but it, com it compensates my time. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh God, you are so inspiring. Um, Thank you. <laughs> we kind of covered this, but I just wanted to 
if I said to you, where do you see yourself? I like, have no idea. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is the weird thing because, yeah. like I said before, I, I don't have any plans. I'm just kind of winging it as the days go by. Yeah. But I think if I see myself in five years' time, somewhere comfortable for me would be... I think what I'm working towards is time freedom more than anything okay. else. It's not even now, money, yeah. it's time freedom. It's the ability to step away from your business, yeah. let the business still run on yeah. and tick over, but you to actually still be able to take a salary from that. Yeah. And I think that's what I'm aiming towards. So I think in the next five years, yeah. because we're going through the adoption yeah. process right now, because um, obviously I don't have a womb or a yeah. vagina. <laughs> um, so I think going through the adoption yeah. process right now is making me start to think a bit more yeah. about the future and about, yeah. you know, what I want to leave in my legacy. Like, um, but also like how I'm going to actually spend time physically with them children yeah, yeah. and what time I'm going to be able to have with them to nurture them and grow them rather than just sitting in an office 18 hours a day yeah. and expecting for the best. Yeah. So I think it's making me look towards the future now, but... <laughs> Hopefully, I'll have a better understanding once I work with this strategist. But I think it is time freedom for me more than yeah. anything else. And do you how important do you feel that it is to have a coach of some sort? Well, this is the thing. So I didn't have a coach at all when I first started my business, yeah. and I muddled alongside the NHS for the first year before I got a life coach. Yeah. The second I got my life coach, I'd had my first session with her. It was like an hour and a half long, and. I came out of that just feeling, mm -hmm. you know, when you feel like, mm -hmm. oh my God, I can do anything. Clarity, I can take on the yeah. world. Yeah. So I was like, I'm going to write a letter to my employer. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> and that's kind of how it went. And I think if I'd have done that the year before, I probably would have quit the year before as well. Like it's it. not that my life coach was telling me to quit the job or anything. It's just she was saying, what are you passionate about? You know, like, has your passion come to an end in the NHS? Is it drying up? And I was working with mental health patients mm. and she was saying, well, you could still work with mental health patients, but in a different setting from a different yeah. angle. So I think by doing that, it really, really helped solidify what I wanted to do. But I really, really wish that I had worked with a business coach from day okay. one, because like I say, I yeah. found things out too late. So I was finding out about, you know, VAT returns and things from my accountant after I'd already hit the threshold. Yeah, And yeah, then I yeah. wasn't prepared for them. And then I was having to do loads of admin and behind the scenes work. Yeah. I just kind of wish there was a book that said, you know, the A to Z of business. There probably is, but I, yeah. just, I just didn't have time to really read it. <laughs> I yeah. just love it so, so much. Thank you so much. I've got one more question that we do ask every single person who is on the podcast. And that question is, what advice would you give to your younger self? Oh, I think it would be to counteract the worst piece of advice I've been given because the worst piece of advice I was ever given is to tone down the gear. Oh. Um, that's what someone said to me in the NHS and I think if I could go back in time and tell my younger self that tone down the gear yeah. and just say like do not tone down the gear yeah. and counteract that I think my life would have been a lot easier I yeah. just think I wouldn't have been as anxious through my teen years yeah. I would have been able to be myself from day yeah. one and who knows I might have been on this journey a lot a lot sooner do you know yeah. what I mean but I just believe that everything happens for a reason and working with my life coach has made me realize that you know my my granddad dying that was his dying gift to me yeah because if he hadn't have died I wouldn't have gone down that rabbit hole of depression and I wouldn't have ended up here today doing this I probably would have still been working for the NHS yeah. so it's kind of like just to let yourself know that yeah. everything happens for a reason yeah. and although you might not know why it's happening in that moment yeah just allow for the divine timing and the universe to deliver what is truly yours and what's meant to be i completely agree and Perfect. and that thing is oh. that saying that your mess is your message yeah. you know that just love that because when you're yeah. in you know we've all been there when you're just like this is shit i'm unhappy i'm not healthy like i can't how can i get out it's in those moments in that time that you then when you do get out of it you can say i've been there i've done yeah. that i understand yeah. you and then that becomes you 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 become relatable yeah you know 100%. if you if you had everything from the very beginning who who actually has that no one so that then no you can't have that like i see you i hear you i did this let me help you yeah that's exactly how I've built my yeah. business model because I just think, well, people can see where I've come from. Like yeah. five years ago, I had shitloads of debt and I've been <laughs> able to pay it all off. Like yeah. I bought myself a Range Rover earlier this ah! year. 
it was it was on my vision board for yeah. so so long since about 2017 mm-hmm. and then i thought to myself actually i'm gonna treat myself i never buy myself anything i never really even buy myself new clothes or anything like mm. that i just make do with what i've got but i think that is all mindset yeah um yeah. and then i just thought you know what i am a wealthy bitch i'm gonna buy myself a range rover and i went out and i got one um so yeah I it's, love it's that. just weird isn't it like how yeah. everything comes back full circle yeah. Can I just quickly, before we end, because I am also obsessed with the vision boards. Yeah. What is your, like, how, what do you believe how to do a vision board? Um, um, let's talk me through it. Okay, so what I usually use is I use something like Canva or um, Layout, you know, Instagram Layout. Mm-hmm. And I just basically choose images and choose phrases or quotes or something that will represent what I want in life. Mm-hmm. So I kind of look ahead to the future in the next year. And I think to myself, what do I want? So last year, for example, I had the Range Rover in the middle. Mm-hmm. I had a picture of my partner with a baby. Mm-hmm. I had a picture of our new house that I um, really want to live in, mm-hmm. like, like this lovely area of Newcastle. So they were kind of my materialistic things. But then I also had just a picture of my dog on there because I want a healthy, happy dog. I had a picture of myself sat on the This Morning couch because I would love for more TV opportunities. Yeah. Um, I had a picture of my mom, her two sisters and my nana on there because just a reminder that family is everything for me. And no matter what happens, it all comes back down to family. Like, do you know what I mean? Um, And then at the middle of it all, I had I serve, I deserve. And I've got that by my office door. So as soon as I go into my office, it's there. As soon as I go out of my office, it's there. It's being constantly imprinted. I've even got it as a wallpaper on my phone as well and a wallpaper on my laptop. And I just think the more that you see something, the more subconsciously that yeah. message is going in. So it's not just saying, you know, that car's on there, so it's going to magically drop from the sky and going to appear outside the house. It's kind of to say, like, remember what you're working towards. Yeah. Remember what's important to you. Remember the materialistic things that you want, but also the the physical things that you want, like for a happy family and a healthy dog and things like that. So everything that's going to make you happy, it just encompasses that, but putting it onto one image. Oh, I love I, I and I isn't it just the best thing when your vision board like things happen and you're like oh there it is there yeah. it was it's because, really weird because my vision board in 2021 I had 14 things on there and yeah. I ticked 13 of them off at the end but I hadn't realized until later on in the year yeah and what was so weird is in 2021 I didn't have it up in my office because yeah. I didn't have an office so it, I just got it printed out and it got stuck in like the bottom drawer somewhere and it wasn't until December when I was like doing a little bit of a cleanse and a declutter, I found my vision board and I was like, oh my God, they're the sunglasses that I bought. They're the same trainers that I bought earlier this year. That's my car that I've got on order. And it was so weird yeah. that like everything on there, I just subconsciously forgot about yeah. and I'd manifested it anywhere. And what was the one thing you hadn't got? And the one thing was the house. I'm still okay. working on that. Still it's working. a beautiful area of Newcastle. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think it's my own limited beliefs because some of the houses up there, not the house that we want, but some of the houses up there were like mm-hmm. one to two million. Yeah, and I was like, like yeah, yeah, I'm currently in like a 200,000 pound house. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's not far away. It's, it's not, not far away. And I do believe that in the next year or so, we will exactly. be up there. Yeah. Exactly. Ma, it has been an absolute pleasure speaking to you. I feel like I could just talk and question you and like find out about everything for hours and hours and hours. <laughs> yeah. um, I will put all of the details of how people can get in contact with you through your Instagram, the, everything that we've spoken about within the show notes. But it has been a pleasure. I know this is just the beginning for you. Like mark oh. my words. I feel like I have this thing in me that when I can see a star... And, you know, you are, you and Francesca are absolute stars. And it, it's, oh, thank you yeah. so much, Nicola. I really appreciate this that. This morning thank- couch is not far away. <laughs> <laughs> okay, my darling, take care. Thank you, you too. Thank bye. you, bye.